Thank you for watching Retro Tech. Please like and subscribe. Shh. Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to give you a review on a tool that I've been using in my shop for nearly a year now, and it is the Hacko FR301, and that is a desoldering tool. And one of the reasons I wanted to go through it is because I recently had a pretty bad mishap with mine. As you can see, it's not supposed to look like this. It's uh, it managed to fall from my table. So today I want to show you uh, the unit, give you a fair review on it, and also uh, we're going to repair it and hopefully do a little demo at the end. Uh, so stick around. But first let's take a look at this and I'll kind of go through what happened. The Hacko comes with a nice carrying case. Now let's take a closer look at mine and I'll tell you about how it was damaged. I had it out while I was recapping something. You can see my workbenches um, are really slick sometimes because I, I use this for filming. So I set it on my workbench here and the cable, which is a six foot cable, but that's one of the things I didn't really like about it is the cable. But the cable kind of winds up and keeps pressure on itself and slides. So that's what happened is mine just sat there and slowly slid right off the edge while I was doing some work. Uh, looking at the main board I was working on and it took a nosedive. And of course I was stressed out because this thing retails for about $300. Uh, you can get it for a little bit less sometimes, but that's pretty much the retail price. Thankfully I went on the Hacko's website. Uh, I had to go directly to their website. I couldn't find it on any distributor or anything. And I was able to get a package delivered of parts here. I did get a couple of maintenance parts, but I did have to order a new casing, so we're replacing that. Remove the screws and remove the spec plate, which has a screw attached inside of it. We should be able to just lift this off and see, show you what is actually going on inside of here. Talk a little bit about it. Well, we've got it open. Let's just do a quick run through on the bottom. This is where our cable comes in for our power. We've also got our temperature control right down here. And then we've got an indicator light here that remains red until we reach the temperature that we are set to and then it'll turn off and be no color at all on it. But this goes from a settings of 1 to 4 and if you look in the manual it'll tell you what those translate to for temperature. If you look down here closer to the back of the handle we've got a on off switch that turns the unit on or off once it's plugged in and then this is our activator switch for our vacuum pump which that's what all this is in here is a vacuum that uh, this element heats up just the same as a soldering iron would and the solder once it becomes uh, liquid and molten is sucked into this hole right here from the tip there and then it goes into a storage chamber and then the air is filtered and expelled out the back of this unit. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So the good news is, is this should just be an easy replacement of us just popping these parts out and putting them in the new shell. I've got my new housing on here. And now I need to replace the back yellow and it screws in. And then we'll be screwing this front end on. Should be good to go. Now my FR301 is reassembled. It looks really nice. Uh, so let's go through some of this other stuff. This comes with the kit when you initially buy it. You'll get some of these maintenance tools, which are helpful. Uh, you get this tray to try to set your nozzle in, but 
Honestly, this thing is pretty much useless to be quite honest with you. It's just, it doesn't want to sit in there and it's, uh, I think it's just sent because they have to send something. It doesn't really work very well. Now, this is our chamber that we're going to assemble now. That's going to go in this spot. It's going to catch all our solder as we suck the solder through. So first, this is the back part that's going to be in the back of our vacuum. Uh, the pieces come with this little catch tray first, which is to catch our solder as it's molten, then it cools, and then it lets air pass through the back, and it passes through this filter, and you will have to change the filter and check the filter periodically as you use this, uh, but you can order replacement filters, which I've got a bunch right here, and once you have that unit ready, you can stick that right in the back of your chamber. It's marked on the chamber which sides front and back and then this is the front which just slips right into there and then pull back on our main housing there we push that button and it pushes everything into place now we're ready here's some other tools that came with this kit this tool for example says it can be used while it's hot but it actually goes around your nozzle and all you do is turn your nozzle and it allows you to pull off this outer and uh, inner parts of the actual suction nozzle in case you need to replace your nozzle or anything gets clogged up in there. It's very easy to take it apart and then put it back together the same way. Just like that. You've also got some tools that are very nice for cleaning that come with it. This is helpful if you get a clog in there. Uh, you can stick it down in there. And it works better when it's heated because there might be something in there right now that doesn't want to be. There we go. And that's just how that works. And this can be used on the inside to help clean too. And um, that's the extent of everything that will come with your unit when you get it in the carrying case. Hopefully I put everything back together right and it'll work because I haven't attested it yet. But you can see I've got it plugged in and this is the cable. What I'm talking about, I just feel like it's not long enough so um, my trouble is, is you see how it, it slides around, it just slid right off the edge when I'm there and cracked on the other housing. So to turn it on, you just push that little switch in the back and that's all there is. You see the LED light come on? It means it's heating up to our temperature. I've got it set at two and a half, which is a gauge here. And that's right at about 800 degrees Fahrenheit. It'll tell you right on the side here. So it, once it's done heating up, it'll go from red to just that light will turn off. And then if I turn on the vacuum, it'll suck uh, at any time. So we want to wait till this heats up and then we'll go ahead and remove a capacitor from this board. And you see it heated up really quick. That's all real time. And uh, I'm going to go in here now and just remove this capacitor real quick. All right, I'm pulling one of these capacitors right here. Now, I always recommend that you reflow the solder on these before you try to pull them, but this one's already been reflowed. So it's just a matter of going down and <laughs> activating that vacuum, and it works really well. So you just, you don't even have to tap the board on some things if you have the solder reflowed. <laughs> And just like that, it comes out very easy. Here's another look at our holes. See, it's very good for this type of work because there's so many small components on both sides of this board that you could easily damage something with lower end uh, rework equipment. This, this is about the one thing that's not that great. See how kind of useless that... I mean, it's not completely useless. It would block the front of the tip from hitting something, but... It's not the best, um, I'm not really sure how they would design it better, but it's not the greatest holder. Plus, if you just leave it sitting out, it naturally will not uh, go down and, and hit the tip on anything because the weight's all here in the back of the handle. Let's talk about my thoughts on this tool overall. I still think this is a great tool for a number of reasons. Uh, first, the good things about it. It does have a wide range of temperature controls on it. Um, it's pretty portable and easy to move around and use. Uh, it's not tied down to any workstation. It can be taken places and used. Uh, it's easy to maintain. Uh, the good thing too is that you can order those replacement parts. This shell housing was only $20. I'm 
shipped from Hakko directly. Uh, there's plenty of used parts. Uh, you can see everything inside as we took it apart is really high quality, so no poor uh, makeup in there or anything that looks like flawed in its design that would uh, limit its capabilities. I do like the fact that you can maintain the nozzle pretty easily with that uh, other tool. Well, let's talk about some of the things I don't like about it. Um, I do like the vacuum button. The vacuum's kind of loud, but I, I don't know what to expect. It probably would be loud no matter what. Uh, the on and off switch is a little awkward. Um, it's hard to hit sometimes, so that's kind of a pain. And also, there's no automatic cutoff on this unit. So if you just left it on and, and, and left the power button on and it was plugged in, the iron would stay hot and could potentially cause a fire or something. So that's something to really consider. There's no just automatic cutoff if it's sitting there for a while or if uh, anything else, you know, just leave it running and forget to turn it off. You have to be remember that. Uh, so that's something. Uh, another thing I don't really know is that the design of the handle is still a little awkward. I feel like it's too heavy towards the unit. You see how I try to hold it and it always slips down that way. It needs some kind of counterweight in the in the handle so it's more balanced and it doesn't want to flip like this especially too when you're working on stuff it wants to go down and and it's it makes it a little bit more difficult to control if you if you kind of understand what i'm saying um, and also the cable again if you keep it rolled up like i do because you have to roll it up like that inside your hacko case you take it out and the cable acts like a, a you know a, a rubber band almost just pulling your tool back and that's how mine fell off but um, you know there's not a lot of choices uh, for something that's portable like this one and easy to use um, you could get a whole rework station but you're looking at spending even more than the three hundred dollars this costs now some suggestions I have is wait till eBay has some kind of knockdown sale where they take 10 to 20 percent off and keep an eye on these they'll be around 270 maybe the lowest price on eBay at times so if you had another you could get it under 250 if, if you get it on the right sale moment but uh, definitely something you'll want to consider if you're going to do any kind of rework on uh, anything like CRTs and um, recapping PVMs or BVMs you know you'll need this and then also we're going to need to talk about some other tools in the future like a hot air rework station because there are some times where we'll need to change surface mount uh, capacitors and this is not good to do that so anyway thank you again uh, now I can get back to work on recapping all these 14 inch PVMs and get ready for the auction so look for a big announcement on that auction and also I'm going to do videos on each one of these monitors as I recap them coming uh, this week thanks again for watching please smash the like button and have a wonderful day